Hi, my name is Rob Spar. I'm the senior pastor at Greystone Evangelical Presbyterian Church here in Indiana, PA. And it's good to be with you here on this Monday, Thursday, where we have Jesus. Many of us will gather on the table and remember Jesus taking the bread and breaking it and saying, this is my body broken for you and pouring the cup and saying, this is the sign of the new covenant, all foreshadowing what would take place in less than 24 hours. He was able to do that because he's sovereign. And the verses that we're looking at for today, John 19, really the second half of verse 16 through 27, through this we see his sovereignty. We see that he was in complete control. Let me read these and then we'll look at it together briefly. Then they took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself, and he went out to what is called Place of the Skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had a sign made and put on the cross. It said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, don't write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate replied, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, a part for each soldier. They also took the tunic, which was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for to see who gets it. This happened. The scripture might be fulfilled. It says, they divided my clothes among themselves and they cast lots for my clothing. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. We as a church staff just looked at these passages to see where we see Jesus' sovereignty, how in charge he was even on the cross, so first they took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself. He would carry the cross. This was all about him. Yes, we know that in the other gospel accounts, they, they have someone on the side of the road carry part of the cross. But what John wanted to get through to us was this was all the action of Jesus carrying the cross beam. And they took him to the place outside the city, which is where many of the sin offerings we read in Leviticus would take place. So in God's sovereignty, the law is being carried out as Jesus was a sin offering, taking our sin upon himself, much like they put their hands upon the lamb in the Old Testament and put it out into the wilderness to take their sins. There they crucified him and two others with him one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Here we have Jesus being crucified. The Persians came up with crucifixion, but the Romans perfected it. I guess the way the Persians did it wasn't as painful and wasn't as shameful. Crucifixion was the most shameful way of death, not only for the Jews, but the Romans. A good Roman would not even speak of crucifixion for it wasn't polite. A Roman would never be flogged or crucified. Crucifixion was for the lowest, the lowest, which Jesus came to identify with. So he was crucified as the nails were being placed between his wrists and his feet. This was all part of the plan for he was hung on a tree. Cursed is he who is hung on a tree, we read in the law. Why was this important? Well, Jesus was taking the most shameful, painful type of death, for that is what our sin deserved. But they crucified him with two others on each side. So we even see as he's being crucified, as he's being lifted up, which was part of the prophecy, the Son of Man being lifted up, 
that he told his disciples would happen. He is lifted up between criminals on either side, those he was identifying with on either side of him, those who had broken the law, though he hadn't, they had, but he identified with them as well as he was in a place between God and humanity. On either side of him, God and humanity, because he came, he came to stand in that place to be the Savior. Then Pilate had a cross, had a sign placed around him. Now, typically as prisoners were walking to their death, they would have a sign around their neck that would say what they did. The thieves would have had that around their neck. But for Jesus, it was a statement of identity. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And many Jews would have seen these signs. And as he was crucified near the city, it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Aramaic, the language of the Jews for the law. Jesus was fulfilling the law. Latin, the, the language of Rome, which was the sign of power. He was the all-powerful king. And the Greeks, who were the thinkers, this would have answered the prophecy and the explanation of justification that he was dying for someone else. These are also the languages that we see in the book of Acts that the gospel goes out to. So he, we see here through the work of Pilate, through the work of someone who doesn't know the Lord, the first place that Jesus' identity as the king of the Jews is being proclaimed is on the cross to all of the people groups that the gospel would be going to. His sovereignty that even on the cross, his identity would be being carried out. The priest didn't want the sign, but Pilate said it would be there. We wonder if Pilate left it there just to, uh, because he was offended by the chief priest always trying to railroad him, but he left them there. Why? Well, again, another sign of sovereignty. Just like he was born in Bethlehem because of a decree of an emperor, here his identity was firmly stated as a decree by a Roman official. God, even on the cross, we see Jesus' sovereignty because Pilate would not change it. God can even use the powerful Romans for his work as they are the ones crucifying him. Then his hand, even around when the soldiers were going to divide the clothes, they didn't because we see in Psalm 22, which is a complete rundown, almost a checklist of what is happening here. I urge you to read it on your own. It says his clothes would not be divided. So this prophecy was fulfilled, but also it states that his tunic was seamless, woven in one piece. Where do we see his sovereignty there? Well, Jesus happened to be wearing a seamless tunic. Only the high priest would wear a seamless tunic. He is declaring that he is the high priest even with his clothing. And then finally, as Jesus is watching his mother weeping and the apostle John standing there, the disciple Jesus loved, he not only cares for his mother by having the two of them there to say, John, take her as your mother and mother, take him as your son. We also see this is the beginning of the church family where our bonds with one another are around the blood of Christ versus the blood of our, of our families and our bodies. So we see his sovereignty, the way that he died, the place where he died, how he was being identified as he died, the fact that his clothes would not even be torn, and declaring the church family, family under Christ, was more than just blood relatives. He is sovereign. Why is that important for us today? Well, my friends, a weak person can be forced to do something. And if you're forced to do something, love is not part of that. But one who is all powerful and all loving, when he does something, it is out of his love. 
We see in his sovereignty, he is doing this out of his love. Even on the cross, he's in charge of all things, allowing himself to be brutally murdered out of his love for us so that we can be justified in front of the Father and we can be the children of God and the family of God. So if he is sovereign even on the cross, he is sovereign over all the pains we know in life, making beauty from the ashes, turning the graves into gardens, as the popular song would say. He is the sovereign one, even while he's on the cross. So today, what are you going through? What are you nervous about? What feels out of control? Almost as if you are in the chaos that would have been at here at this crucifixion. Well, no, if he is sovereign and in control at the crucifixion, he is still very much sovereign and he has all authority in heaven on earth. And he is caring for us. Spend some time in this reading asking the Spirit to point out to you what you need to know and think through. Amen.